In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a real-life serverless application that is currently serving real production workloads. Often companies only reveal high-level outlines of their systems, but in this video, we're going to zoom in to see the low-level building blocks of a completely serverless application. This includes the AWS services it's built on, the connections between components, and the trade-offs of using certain technologies over others. The product that we're going to be examining is Ilograph, an interactive diagramming application that helps you create and visualize complex system architectures. In fact, we're going to be using the Ilograph tool itself to explain how it works. The creators have been generous enough to provide a sample application that lays out the details of how their architecture is set up. You can follow along with me using the link in the pinned comment section. And I'd just like to take a brief moment to thank Ilograph for being the sponsor of today's video. In a standard three-tier application architecture, we have a presentation layer, a compute layer, and a database layer. In Ilograph, users interact with a tool either using the web application, a desktop client, or a command line interface. For the compute layer, Ilograph uses a combination of API gateway and Lambda functions to facilitate all create, read, update, and delete operations. For data storage, it uses S3 for resource content like team icons, diagram dependencies, and even the diagrams themselves. At the database level, it uses DynamoDB to store diagram metadata, permissions, history data, and a whole lot more. There are a couple more services at play here as well, like Cognito for authentication, simple email service for email notifications, and key management service for encryption. Now there is certainly a lot going on here in this diagram and we're not going to discuss everything, but let's focus in on a couple of key areas. First is the diagram endpoint. This endpoint invokes a single Lambda function that handles different user workflows, such as creating, reading, updating, or deleting diagrams. By clicking on it, we can see all the dependencies that it uses across the different cases. Now there is a debate here as to whether you should separate out the corresponding workflows into separate Lambda functions or keep them all together as they are here. This is a highly debated topic with no right or wrong answer. To keep the number of individual Lambda functions down, Ilograph decided to go with a single Lambda approach. Now in addition, some of you may ask whether or not Lambda functions are the right choice here for a REST API. Some folks are rightly concerned with the dreaded cold start phenomenon of Lambda invocations that can increase the latency of initial calls to your API. Keep in mind here that Ilograph uses Node.js, which is typically one of the best programming languages to use to mitigate cold start. But if high initial latency is a concern for your application, you may want to consider an alternative option like AWS Fargate. Getting back to how this Lambda handles multiple workflows, let's drill down a little bit more by taking a look at the code perspective. We can see here that this Lambda triggers three different code paths depending on the context in which it's being called. If it's called to retrieve a diagram, it triggers this flow. If it's to update a diagram or create one, this flow. And for updating diagram permissions, this final flow. Let's drill down even more to see how it handles getting and updating diagrams, starting with getting. This view shows us a sequence diagram of the different pieces of code and dependencies that this flow interacts with. During the get diagram flow, we call the get data method, which checks the user's permissions from their authentication token. We'll take a look at how this is done in a couple of moments. If the permissions match the diagram the user is trying to access, we're able to retrieve the diagram's metadata, including its S3 location, from our diagram's DynamoDB table. With its location in hand, we enter this second code block called the hydrate entry that's responsible for retrieving the corresponding diagram from S3. At this point, we're done with retrieving the asset, and the diagram is returned to the front end for visualization for the user. So that's how diagrams are retrieved. Let's take a look at how diagrams are created and updated. This flow is a bit more complicated. When a user makes a request, we trigger the update diagram code. Similar to the get flow, this code parses the provided Cognito authentication token to check it for permissions. It then calls into the Cognito user pool itself to identify the user's username and email. We then save the corresponding user's diagram buffer to S3, overriding what's already there if one exists with the same name. 
We then update the metadata in the diagrams table, and finally add a record to the history table to keep track of changes over time. At this point, the user gets a 200 OK back from the client, and the update or insert has been successful. One other thing to point out here is the choice to use DynamoDB in this application's architecture. As you can see, there are quite a few key value lookups here, where we have the ID of the record in hand, and we would like to retrieve it quickly. This makes DynamoDB a great choice for this application's architecture. If instead we're searching for a user's content based on some fuzzy key, or if we had many relationships in our data that we would need to query on, a relational database like Postgres may be a more suitable choice. Let's switch gears a little bit now to take a look at how Ilograph manages DNS for these APIs. The API endpoint that manages the get and update API is api.ilograph.com. The domain itself is registered not in AWS, but in a separate domain provider called Namecheap. Ilograph configured their namespace and CNAME records to point to a record set group in AWS's Road 53 service. In effect, this makes it so that anytime a machine makes a request to the api.ilograph.com endpoint, it's routed to Ilograph's AWS backend. From there, the row 53 DNS entry is wired to an API gateway endpoint, which in turn triggers the handle diagram flow we were just examining. Lastly, let's take a quick look at how Ilograph manages authentication. When a new user signs up, Ilograph's Cognito user pool leverages a post signup trigger in the form of a Lambda function called confirm user. This Lambda sends a welcome email to the user, adds their email to a mailing list, and initializes permissions by writing to the permissions table. After a user signs in, Ilograph triggers a generate token Lambda function that reads off the permissions and domains table to determine which resources this user has access to. It then appends this information to the token so that it can be used later in the get and update flows. So this has been an example of a real life serverless application. Again, this tool is called Ilograph and it's free to use for individual users. I'll provide a link to this diagram in the pinned comments and description sections of this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.